Prague's Jewish town, a peculiar phenomenon in the heart of Prague, a city of the hundred spires. Evening passed and morning came, the first day, the first book of Moses. According to the Jewish tradition, one day is measured from one sunset to the next. The Jews have witnessed periods of the city's upsurge and decline, but since they themselves were never full-fledged citizens, they never felt free, not even during its heydays. In the times of adversity, their suffering was all the greater. The Jewish faith is as old as its experience with the terrifying depths of the human soul. Torah, the five books of Moses, the holiest of the treasures of Judaism. Moses wrote the books at the bidding of God. Torah is written in a Hebrew script, just like the Sinai Ten Commandments, the world's most succinct and profound legal code. Take care of the innocent, follow the just, since the ultimate goal of man is peace. Prague played host to Jewish settlers already at the dawn of its history. Chronicler Cosmas mentioned merchant settlements beneath the castle. And he also recorded some sorrowful episodes involving the forcible baptism of Jews and the subsequent pogrom in the year 1096 during the Crusades. There are seven roads leading to the divine service and one of them applies to each pious Jew. The human soul is the light of the Lord. Prague Ghetto, a kaleidoscope of fates of individuals, families, whole generations throughout the passage of centuries. The Jews were granted their first legal status in Bohemia between 1174 and 78 under Sobieslav II. They enjoyed privileges just like any foreigners. Przemysl Otakar II granted the Jews privileges which secured them some kind of civic rights. These included the right to internal autonomy and the right to be protected by the king. For that, however, Jewish regality had to be paid. On paper, the right existed, but both Otakar and his successors made it abundantly clear to the Jews that they were not personally free. Innocence III was infamous for his attacks on the Jews at the Lateran Council in 1215, he instituted the mark of shame which for centuries set Jews apart from Christians. He instituted usury as the sole source of livelihood for the Jews. Prague Ghetto, a bizarre grouping of little houses and mysterious zigzagging lanes, a quarter enveloped in a mystical romantic atmosphere reeking of poverty and wretchedness. The last days of the Prague Ghetto came in 1893, when the law on slum clearance was signed. This verdict spelled the end of the legendary Prague Walter Josephov, named in honor of Emperor Joseph II, who deserved most of the credit for securing the equality of Jews. In the original Jewish town, six out of the nine synagogues were preserved. So was the Jewish town hall and part of the old cemetery. Pope Innocent IV outlawed the desecration of Jewish cemeteries in 1246 under pain of excommunication. From them, the peace and tranquility of the Jewish cemetery was protected. The old new synagogue, the oldest in Europe, it was built in 1270. For more than 700 years, its Gothic walls have been reverberating with the prayers of the believers. The synagogue was a shelter for Prague Jews during the pogroms under the reign of Václav IV. This standard of Jewish solidarity was granted to the Prague Jewish community by Charles IV in 1358. Its present-day appearance dates back to 1716 during the rule of Charles VI.
The Jewish town hall, this was built at the end of the 16th century by architect Roder. Its present-day Rococo appearance is the result of a reconstruction in 1763. The Klaus Synagogue, this originated at the end of the 17th century from the merger of three smaller synagogues known as Klauses. One of these used to house the famous Talmudic school founded by Rabbi Löw. Today, this is the sole monument of early Baroque synagogue architecture. The Pinkas Synagogue. Early in the 16th century, Jalman Hoshevsky built this private synagogue on the spot which in the 14th century belonged to a man named Pinkas. This high, single ale interior boasted an early Gothic reticulated vault. This is Europe's oldest women's ritual bath, Mikwe. This Renaissance synagogue, known as the Tall Synagogue, was built by Mordechai Meisel, the court Jew and financier of Emperor Rudolf II. Its high vaulting and rich stucco decoration are unparalleled in comparable domestic architecture. It was built by architect Roder. Also, the origin of another Renaissance synagogue is connected with the personality of Mordecai Meisel. It bears his name since it was built in 1592 as Meisel's private synagogue. It was gutted by fire and rebuilt in the 19th century in the neo-Gothic style, though reduced in size. During the reign of Rudolf II, two new synagogues, a Jewish town hall and a bathhouse were built in the Prague ghetto. Its streets were paved. Two centuries later, under the rule of Maria Theresa, the Prague Jewry experienced its harshest suffering. In 1744, the Empress signed a decree expelling the Jews from Bohemia. Isaac, the son of Moses, writes in a gem of Hebrew literature, or Zerua, or Divine Light, it is not customary to slay the Jews. The bizarre fate of the Prague ghetto underwent yet another transformation which is unprecedented in human history. German Nazism decided to exterminate the Jews not only in the Prague ghetto but the world over. Before their deportations to Nazi death camps, the Jews from 153 Jewish communities in Bohemia and Moravia had to leave behind their property, which is now housed in the Prague Jewish Museum, established in 1906. Having concentrated the exhibits, the Germans later planned to use them to ridicule the exterminated race. Hanging over the present-day state Jewish Museum is the specter of mass extermination. The museum's valuable collections are not only a potent symbol, but also a memorial to the massacred Jews. In this way, German Nazism stands accused by the Jewish law book, which includes the commandment, Thou shalt not kill. Nobody has ever managed to destroy the Jewish spirit, although attempts to do this date back to the dawn of human history. If a boy is born, the parents will donate an embroidered swathing band to the local synagogue. This is then used to bind Torah scrolls. May he grow strong and study the Torah, marry and perform good deeds. Since the times of Abraham, circumcision has been a physical sign of the covenant concluded between God and the people of Israel. You must also agree to keep the covenant with me, both you and your descendants in future generations. You and your descendants must all agree to circumcise every male among you. 
This is a set of circumcision instruments which was used in the middle of the 19th century. Circumcision is performed on the eighth day after the boy's birth. The father hands his son to the godfather, Sandak, while the mohel performs the surgical operation. The vacant space next to the Sandak is reserved for the messenger of the covenant, Prophet Elijah. The text of the Torah must be handwritten without a single error. It is written on a piece of parchment which is then rolled into a scroll. Pointers are used during the reading of the Torah. Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew name for the two-day high festival which ushers in the Jewish New Year. It falls on the beginning of the month of the autumn equinox, Tishri, September in our solar calendar. These are the days of judgment, when the Lord weighs our acts, judges them and records them in the Book of Life. During this feast, we pray for the unity of the human race, reconciled by the service to one God, the Father of all creation. The ram's horn, the Hebrew shofar, its sound reminds us of the sacrifice of Isaac, turning our attention to the forefather Abraham, whose example shows how profound the Jews' love for God must be. Bar Mitzvah, the name of a boy who's reached the age of 13, the age of religious maturity. An excerpt from the biblical books of prophets, Haftar, is read out from the al Memor. This sash with trappings and a blue band is the prayer shawl called the talis. This is a sign of religious maturity. The two poles onto which the scroll is wound are known as the tree of life. Torah is regarded as a live object. If a fire breaks out, this is the first object to be saved from the synagogue. If damaged, there are precise rules on how to bury it. The days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are called the days of repentance. Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, is the last of those ten days. This is a day of fasting. On that day, everything in man is directed towards his return to God, because on Yom Kippur, he seals our fates according to our sincerity and our endeavors in seeking him in our repentance. On this holiday, the Jews commemorate their dead by lighting candles. These are part of the Yiskor ceremony. Today, candles may be replaced by lamps. Rabbi Lerv, founder of the Talmudic school. The rabbi paved the way with his teaching methods for the establishment of the renowned Prague Yeshua Hebrew University. The Jews have always devoted exceptional care to the education of their children, boys in particular. Talmud Torah is in order to study and promote the knowledge of the divine Torah. Parents are especially obliged to make sure that their offspring attend Talmud Torah lessons as soon as possible. Their participation does not end with the ritual bar mitzvah because the study of the Torah is the first and foremost duty of each and every Jew throughout the whole of his life. Torah is covered by a jacket which is made of silk, velvet or other materials, often with an embroidered dedication. These little jackets are designed in the same way as curtains of the Torah box, Aron HaKadesh. 
The Feast of Tabernacles is associated with the tradition of Canaan customs of thanksgiving for the harvest of trees and shrubs. But the holiday has its sacred background too. When Solomon built a temple in Jerusalem, he had it consecrated during the Sukkot. And from then until the temple's destruction, Jerusalem was the main pilgrimage town. The symbol of the holiday is the lulav and the citrus fruit called ethrug. This silver bowl comes from the early 19th century. When you have harvested your fields, celebrate this festival for seven days. And on the first day, take some of the best fruit from your trees. Take palm branches and the branches of leafy trees and begin a religious festival. You shall live in your shelters for seven days so that your descendants may know Blessed be you, O God, who blesses the people of Israel with the commandment of the matrimonial chuppah and the holy matrimonial covenant. The wedding canopy, chuppah, hangs over the heads of the bride and the bridegroom. This silver ring dates to the early 19th century. The cantor reads the matrimonial covenant, the Ketubah. The front of the jacket in which the Torah is covered is adorned with a silver shield. A pointer in the shape of a small hand is hung over it. Hanukkah, the festival of lights of the consecration is a national celebration of the liberation of Jerusalem from the yoke of Antioch Epiphanes and the reconsecration of the temple by Judas of Maccabi in the year 165 BC. This holiday, lasting for eight days, is connected with the legend of the miraculous vessel of undesecrated oil blessed by the high priest, which was to have burned in the temple for one day, but which, miraculously, burned for a whole eight days. The symbol of the holiday is the eight-arm candelabra with an additional arm in the middle. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. On that day, no one is to work, neither you, your children, your slaves, your animals, nor the foreigners who live in your country. The fifth book of Moses. Oh, 
The Sabbath is a day of rest, a day of looking back as well as looking forward. This is a day of prayer, and prayer is an expression of thanks, gratitude, and respect. On the eve of the Sabbath, the whole family meets at a festive table. Each holiday, the Sabbath included, starts in the evening of the previous day. This recitation of this psalm marks the transition from Friday to the Sabbath. The old new synagogue in Prague is the only place in the world where this psalm is recited twice in succession. This custom associated with a legend relating to Rabbi Loeb and his mystical golem or artificial man. The rabbi was just attending such a divine service when he found out that he had forgotten to take the magical sherm or life force out of Golem's for it. To prevent a disaster, he hurried home where Golem was already wreaking havoc and took the sherm out of his for it. In this way, though, he violated the covenant on the Sabbath as a day of rest, and so, on his return to the synagogue, he begged for the psalm to be recited again. Extension pieces called Riminim, in translation pomegranates, are fitted on to the Torah. In his book, The Jewess of Toledo, Leon Feuchtwanger wrote, the festival of Purim arrived, the day on which the Jews celebrate their salvation at the moment of greatest need through the Queen Esther. The villain Haman, or the protege of King Ahasuerus, wanted to exterminate all the Jews of the Persian Empire because Jew Mardukaios once defended his vanity. But Haman's plans were eventually thwarted by Queen Esther, Mardukaios' niece. This one-day festival is full of dressing up, entertainment and merrymaking. The scroll of Esther is read out in the synagogue. Havdala is a domestic religious ceremony which culminates the Sabbath or other holidays. A special pleated candle for the Havdala ceremony. A silver spice box from the late 19th century. It was manufactured by the filigree technique. All the members of the family are blessed over the spice box. We thank the Lord who has separated the sacred from the profane, light from darkness and the Sabbath from work days. Moses said to his people, Remember this day, the day on which you left Egypt, the place where you were slaves. This is the day the Lord brought you out by his great power. The second book of Moses. Hassar belongs among the pilgrimage festivals and lasts for eight days. This holiday falls on the month of the spring equinox known as Nisan, March according to our solar calendar. 
Pesach commemorates the exodus of the Jews from Egypt, their liberation from slavery. Sedar takes place on the first two evenings of the Pesach holiday. This is a family holiday. A Sedar plate with unleavened bread, Passover bread and symbolic food. The Haggadah, the book describing the captivity and delivery of the Jews from Egypt. The duty to take care of the sick and the dying is anchored in the Talmud. Care for the infirm, dying and dead was exemplary in the Prague ghetto. Whoever died, rich or poor, was put into the dust of the earth by the funeral fraternity known as Chevra Kadish, founded in 1564. The Lord told Adam, For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The first book of Moses. The deceased would be cleansed and dressed. The bodies, covered by prayer robes called the talis, are sprinkled with soil from Jerusalem. Everybody, irrespective of former wealth or status, is treated with the same simplicity. The coffin is without decorations, made of rough planks. King David. King David made Jerusalem the center of his empire, transferring there the main objects of the ancient Jewish cult the Ark of the Covenant, Aron HaKodesh. The Ark of the Covenant has gradually been changed into a box for keeping the Torah, which has become part and parcel of the synagogue. This is located on the side turned towards Jerusalem. During the Shavuot festival, the people of Israel accepted the Torah, becoming its devotees. This festival commemorates the appearance of the Lord on Mount Sinai, where Moses was given the Ten Commandments after 40 days. At the same time, this is the festival of first fruits, because then the first fruits of a new harvest were brought to the temple in Jerusalem as a sign of gratitude to the Lord. You are resting in the shadow of your omnipotence. No accident shall befall you. Poverty shall not come into your hut. But why this strict service to a single god? Why this step forward in the midst of countless pagan pantheons of various gods? Why has this pure idea of God always brought such a heavy burden to the Jews? After the slum clearance in the Prague ghetto, Franz Kafka confessed. Our heart still knows nothing of the slum clearance. That unhealthy old Jewish town is inside us, much more real than the new quarters sprawling around us. Being awake, we pass through a dream. We ourselves are a sector of the times that have passed. The times have passed indeed, but the genius loci of the Prague Jewish town has remained. It still lives on.